Hey guys, we're going to learn about Django and we're going to start out by building our own Django application. We're going to cover the very basics about Django, how to use it, how to set it up and what's important to cover and then we're going to go into more advanced topics. To stay up to date, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like down below and let's jump right into it. We're going to build a polls app in Django which allows us to select a number of different questions. For example, what our favorite Python framework is, we can click on this and then select one of the answers, for example Django, and then confirm our vote. And this way we keep track of the different options and how many votes each one of those got. And each time we click on that, we can add another vote. So for example, for our favorite programming language, we can select Python, confirm this, and this is going to be saved in our database. So here we can see we have six votes for Python, one vote for Ruby, and no votes for C as an alternative. We'll also see how we can create additional questions. So here, for example, we could say, what is your operating system? And then provide the different options. For example, Mac, Windows, and Linux. We can also provide the date information. So for example, we create it now and this time. And then this additional option will show up in our list. So here we can answer this and thereby add additional entry to our question dictionary. We're going to build this in multiple steps and we're going to start out by installing and setting up Django. All right, guys, let's get right into it. So to get started, we need to make sure that we have Python installed. And after that, we need to install Django itself. So to check whether Python is installed and which version, we can open our terminal. So on macOS, you can press command and space. And here you can type in terminal and that's gonna open your terminal window. And under Windows, you can click on the Windows icon and type in CMD. All right, let me type in Python. And here we can see I currently have that version Python 2.7 installed, which is an older version of Python. So we want to download the latest version. To do that, we can head over to python.org slash downloads. And here we can click on this button to download the latest version. The website automatically identifies our operating system and depending on whether you're using Linux, macOS, or Windows, the recommended version will be displayed. And if we click on the download button, we can download the installation file, we can start it and then follow the steps to install the latest Python version. Now to verify that that worked properly, we can go back to our terminal window. And here I'm gonna type in Python 3. And this is going to open the Python REPL. Here we can see we have Python version 3.10.5 installed which is currently the latest stable version. Now in the next step, we can install Django, but to do that, we are going to install it in a virtual environment. And to do that, we are going to use the pip package manager. Link in the description down below if you haven't installed that yet. And we are going to type in pip install virtual env, and this is going to install the virtual environment for us. Next, we can navigate to the folder where we want to create our application. So for example, on our desktop, and then we can type in the command virtual env followed by the name of the virtual environment that we want to create. So for example, env, and we can press enter. Now after that, we can have a look at our current directory by typing in ls. And we can see we now have a folder in here called env. And this folder contains the information for our virtual environment. So in the next step, we can actually enable our virtual environment. To do that, we are going to type out source followed by env, the name of our folder bin, which is another folder inside of the env folder, and then activate. And now we can see we have env in parentheses, and that means our virtual environment is activated. And now inside of our virtual environment, we can install Django. We could have also done that outside of that virtual environment, but especially if we work on multiple Django projects, we may want to work with different versions of Django. Therefore, it's generally a good idea to work with a virtual environment because that nicely separates the different Django versions so we don't have a conflict. Now with our virtual environment activated, we are going to type out pip install Django and that's going to download Django version. And here we see we have Django 4.0.6 installed. Now once Django is installed, we can use the command Django-admin followed by start project and the project name to create a new project. So in this case, we are going to create a new project called MySite which is going to create a directory for us and, and our Django application will be inside of that directory. So let's have a look. We can see we have a new directory MySite created. So let's navigate to that. 
After that, we're going to open that in a code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code in this case. So I'm typing out code dot. And when I press enter, it's opening the current directory in Visual Studio Code. Here we can take a quick look at our directory. So we have the my site directory here with a couple of files underneath. And then we have a separate manage.py file. So the manage.py file is a command line utility file that we're using to execute different Django commands. And this contains different instructions. We are not going to modify it most of the time, but it's very important to have that in place. Then we have our my site directory right next to that. And that's the actual Python package that we use for our project. Here we have an init file that's empty. And that basically tells Python that this directory should be considered a Python package. We also have a settings file here and a URLs file, which we're going to take a look at in a little bit that's being used to properly match the different routes that we are going to use for our web application. But before we do anything else, let's go back to our terminal and let's use the manage.py file that we just saw to start our development server. So we're going to type in python manage.py run server and press enter. We get a warning here that we have a certain number of unapplied migrations. We're going to handle that a little bit later. That's to be expected. And then we can see here at the bottom that we started the development server at this particular URL. So we can hold down control and left click and then click on open link. And that's going to open our web browser and we can see that the install worked properly. So our Django application is still very basic, but it properly started up. And we can see here at the top that we indeed have this particular IP address and we are operating on port 8000, which is the default port for development. Now, if for whatever reason port 8000 is not available for you, then you could also specify the port number, for example, 8080. And if you already have that port in use, that's a possibility to use a different port manually. But in most cases, run server like this should be sufficient. At this point, we created our new Django project and we figured out that it starts properly. But now to actually create our project itself, we are going to work with a number of different applications. The Django project actually comprises of the different apps that we can work with and apps themselves are kind of a container of certain functionality. So we are going to create a polls application. So therefore we are going to create an additional app called polls. And to do that, we are going to use the manage py command again. And this time we are going to type out start app. And then we specify the name of the app that we want to create. Now, when we press enter, that new app is created. And we can now head back to our code editor. And here we can see next to my site, to the project we created, we also have the polls folder and this polls directory here contains a number of entries for example we have apps.py we have a model section and we have a view section so in general we're going to split up our code into front-end related topics which would be in the views.py file and then database centric information would be in models.py let's first open our views.py file and we are going to create an index page we are first going to remove everything from that file here. And then we are first going to import the HTTP response class from, from the HTTP module, which is part of Django. And that allows us to handle requests in Django. We then create a new index method here, which takes a request object, and it's going to return an HTTP response. So in this case, just a string, hello world, your Zipol's index. Now in order to display that view though, we need to map it to a URL that we can use to navigate to this page. And for that, we are going to create a new file urls.py inside of our polls directory. So here I'm going to type out urls.py. This is going to be our new file. And you can see that we already have a urls.py file inside of our my site directory, but this one is specific to this particular polls app. Inside of this urls.py file, we are first going to import the pass function. And then we are going to import the views module from our current directory. Because inside of the polls directory, of course, we have the views.py file that we just modified. And we are going to import that in order to use it inside of our urls.py file. We then need a new variable called URL patterns, which contains a list of path entries. And we are first going to say that the root path is going to refer to view.index. And that, of course, is exactly matching the name of that 
method here that we defined before, which is going to return this HTTP response object. Now with that in place, we still need to redirect from the default urls.py file, which is inside of our project my site folder to our actual app. So therefore we are going to head over to the urls.py file, which is inside of the my site directory. We can remove the comment here on top. And we're going to add the, the include function along with the pass function, which is already in there. And then we add an additional entry in, inside of our URL patterns list. Specifically, we want to say that if a user navigates to a URL that includes polls, then we want to redirect to polls.urls, which of course is the name of our app that we created, polls. And then urls is the name of the file that we created before. Now with that in place, let's go back to our terminal. And let's type out python manage py run server again to start our server. And again, we need to open that URL. And we can see we get a 404 error here. That's because we currently don't have any URL entry that redirects to the default path. We need to adjust our URL here to polls. And now we can see the text that we typed out before. This is exactly the text that we typed out here in our HTTP response object. We tapped our hello world you at the polls index and the way we got there is by navigating to the url we were using the pass function here to navigate over to polls.urls from my site urls so here we are switching from the project level over to the app level inside of the polls directory we have the urls.py file and here we are redirecting to views.index so the name of the module, the name of the file views.py and here the name of the function that we're working with. So if we head over to views.py, we can see the function we defined before and here we're returning that response. So that's basically how we can navigate to this. So we made the first change to our application. We adjusted the URLs to navigate to this particular page and we have a basic way to provide some content of our web application using Django. In the next step, we are going to work with databases. And for that, see you guys in the next video.